share with us this idea that the that some of us operate as if the internet is us and all the yeah. things that we see there are real and, yeah. and and not looking at it just like a tool. It should just be a tool in our life, right? It's a it's just a tool. And it goes back to my, you know, my concentration or interest in us having a little bit more discipline in how we communicate what it is we communicate and how we utilize these tools. I I think that if you are a baker and you own a bakery, you try to find the best oven in order to make your cupcakes, right? It's the perfect oven. It's the perfect size for your space. It's the perfect tool for what it is that you need. And I think social media spaces and the world wide web are simply just tools that you use in order to be able to communicate what it is that you want and make sure that those tools are appropriate for you. Not all tools, not all ovens are ideal for that baker. And so not all tools that are available on the internet are ideal for you. And so to think that we are a prisoner of all of these tools and we are all of these things, it's just an exhausting going back to trying to be everything to everyone and sharing every emotion all of the time. It really does take away from the discipline and the the true intention of what it is that you're trying to say. One of the things that a lot of, I'm, I'm an also an adjunct professor, and a lot of my students will come to me and even grown people will say, I want to be a TikToker. I want to be an Instagram influencer. I want to be a YouTuber. And for me, I always meet them and they, they I crunch my face and they're like, what? What's wrong? I not think that I can do that. And it's not that I don't think that they're capable of being successful on these platforms or utilizing these tools. I just don't think that there is such a thing as a TikToker, a YouTuber, or an Instagram influencer. I think that there's a chef that uses TikTok. I think that there's a comedian that uses Instagram. I believe it's a makeup artist that uses YouTube. These are tools that we use in order to convey our talents, our industries, and our expertise. These are not who it is we are. We don't own these tools. As much as all of us want to pretend that Mark Zuckerberg is our friend, he, we, I'm not in the meeting. So I can't say that my expertise belongs to a tool in which I do not own. It's kind of like saying, oh, I'm an emailer. What? I have so many people who follow me on email. It's bizarre. You're not an emailer. Email is a tool that you use in order to send a message. And so TikTok and all of these platforms are just simply tools. And so when we determine our messaging or what we want to say, we try to find the best tool to help us do that. And that's what I want people to think about. Well, who are you as a person? What industry are you in? What do you want to communicate? And then determine what tool best serves you. Um, and so I hope I answered that question. Um, yeah, but I think that what you're saying is really true. Like it gets to something like um, about the reason why I, I scratch my head about yeah. uh, about social media and spending so much time on it. Yeah. Because you know, if you want to live with some meaning and purpose, yeah, um, you, you can't spend a lot of time on the places where, right. where there is no meaning and purpose. I mean, it, it, there's nothing to kind. There's nothing. There is nothing to whisper about, right? Because here's the deal: the individuals that are the most successful on these platforms are grounded in industry. They are. They are grounded in industry, and that provides the stability in which they need. They're cooking all the time on TikTok. I can rely on them cooking. I can rely on their recipes. It's grounded in industry, talent, and expertise. The individuals that have a really hard time that are finding themselves in emotional situations, finding themselves losing opportunities, are not grounded in industry. And so the discipline that it takes to be grounded in industry, the discipline that it takes to be a deliverer of news, the di uh, discipline that it takes in order to be a dancer, in order to be a makeup artist, we're cheating ourselves of that discipline by trying to take over and fold ourselves into platforms in which we do not own. But if you focus on the discipline, it doesn't matter the platform, right? Because if, for instance, I, I grew up in times that gladly age myself in the MySpaces and the Vines, all platforms that no longer exist, but I... <laughs> I'm still here and I just need to find a new tool to use to be able to convey my talent. And so I just want young people or people in general to say, okay, what is it that I'm looking to communicate? What is it that I'm going to say in my elevated voice? And where does that voice need to live? What tool best serves me and where it is that I want to go? Mm -hmm. And I like this, um, this flipping the the purpose, I, I mean, I love to get on the internet and see my yeah. sister's new puppy. 
yes, or of that my yeah my patient's son just got a degree from MIT or whatever. I mean, but that's what I, my purpose of going there is to learn about other people's lives. And then once I'm done, I'm gone. I don't get involved in political arguments. I don't chime in on some crazy thing that someone said. I just go there <laughs> and I have a purpose and then I'm gone and I live my real life. And you're gone because there's a sense of discipline within your action. The World Wide Web is outside. That's how I see it. It's outside, right? It, as if you would go out, would you do whatever it is you're doing online outside? Would you be half naked in the mall? No, right. You, right? Would you just go screaming and cursing down your street? You wouldn't. And so we need to receive the internet as if it is being outside because it is in fact outside. Your neighbors can see you and question your stability. The people can take you away because you have no clothes on in an inappropriate location. And it's not to stifle you, but to free you in spaces. Now, keep in mind, there are places where you can be as nudist colonies. You can be as nude as you want. So find your space online for that respective community to see and hear you in an appropriate way. But when you're on Main Street in the middle of the world, may, don't be surprised if you are judged as if you are outside. It's that simple. That, I mean, that, is, uh, that is one of those things I'm not going to be able to unsee. I, I talk to people all the time, um, uh, uh, the, the folks who leave me with one thing <laughs> that I can't unsee afterwards. And I think that that, that, Outside. That is the way I'm going to start looking at my online presence yeah. when I'm just Dr. Linda checking out my sister's new puppy or whatever. I, I see the same things everyone else does that I just want to chime in on and put my two cents in. But no, <laughs> if I pass somebody on the street who is going off, I wouldn't engage them. I would just pass on as fast as I could. You wouldn't engage. You wouldn't engage. Yeah. And there are things that you would see that you might engage, like so-and-so. Yeah. Needs you help know, across the street help. or something, right? Using your manners, right. right? Using your manners, being disciplined. Somebody says happy birthday, you say thank you, right? Somebody, right, has something valuable to give, has lost something, you say, has anybody seen this cat? Like these are kind things. We have lost our way in the the urge to share every thought, as if the we are, as if we are undisciplined. And unkind. And there's no, as if there's no ramifications or as if there is no consequence. And if you yeah. were to do the same thing outside, would there be? And the answer is yes. There would be big consequences. And so I think we just need to take note of that as it relates to what we and how we would like to utilize our voice. And I think our voices are such amazing and beautiful tools that can share love and empowerment and you know, diversity and inclusion and all of the wonderful things if we choose to use it, if we choose to elevate it. So, all right. So this is, so this is very huge. So we're getting to scream your dream. Okay. I want to ask you one more thing in this same um, light, because I think it's right in there. Um, I, some thought leader shared with me once uh, a little three sentence thing that I asked myself when I'm in a conversation, let's say tomorrow at the Thanksgiving dinner table with an uncle. I, I This is not happening. I don't even live near my <laughs> uncles. I'm not even sure I have any, but um, <laughs> you know, like, do does this need to be said? Mm. Does it need to be said by me? Yeah. And does it need to be said by me right now? Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah. I constantly yeah. check myself. We were out to dinner with friends last night. I did it three times. Oh. We hadn't seen them in a long time. And we knew that we had two hours to have dinner and there was a lot to be catching up on for the reasons that you just talked about. Sure. And I'm like, uh, does this need to be said? Does this need to be said by me? And, yeah. and, and, um, does it need to be said right now? And yeah. It really, really helps you make sure your voice is, is more yeah. powerful because it's, it's more directed.